Hello and welcome to ET Insight, where we get you a 360 degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I'm Sridhar Ramakrishnan and here's what we have for you on the show today. The general anti-avoidance rule or GAR is necessary for a country like India, which wants to control black money and plug tax evasion. But there's no such thing as good tax. Find out why GAR has spooked foreign investors and India Inc. And Ketan Dalal of PwC and Rohan Shah of ELP tell us why these new rules are possibly the worst way to plug tax loopholes. A top story first. Is tax planning a crime? That is a question that each investor buying or selling shares of Indian companies from tax havens like Mauritius is asking. That's because India is implementing the general anti-avoidance rule or GAR which seeks to plug tax evasion. But tax evasion and tax planning are perhaps two sides of the same coin. And that is where the trouble is. Nikhil Shivadas has the report. It's a tightrope walk to judge whether taxes have been avoided or evaded. Especially if the transaction in question relates to the shares of an Indian company executed abroad through a web of entities across several tax havens like Mauritius, the Cayman Islands and even the British Virgin Islands. The situation gets more complex if the entities in these tax havens have a proven track record and are not set up for the sole purpose of executing the transaction in question. There's no way the tax man will give it the benefit of the doubt. Proof of that is the Supreme Court's recent landmark ruling in the Vodafone case. And even though the Indian government has lost the case, it's not giving up the battle just yet. Enter the all-pervasive general anti-avoidance rule or GAR. This is essentially an anti-avoidance measure. This house gave me the mandate in the debate of the black money that not only to bring back black money stashed outside, take steps to prevent the generation of black money. To put it simply, the GAR is a rule in the proposed direct tax code which seeks to tax the transfer of shares or interest in any entity registered or incorporated outside India by deriving a substantial value from assets in India. It is a set of provisions which grants powers to the tax man to invalidate any arrangement for tax purposes if it is entered into with the main purpose of obtaining a tax benefit related to income tax, wealth tax or dividend distribution tax. The GAR will also prevail over double tax avoidance agreements. It is actually uh, in a way a limited treaty override. Uh, so what it will do is that if at all any tax benefit has been claimed by the taxpayer under a tax treaty, uh, that will get overridden once the GAR provisions are invoked. Here's how it will work. The GAR can be invoked if one of the main purposes of the arrangement is to get a tax benefit and if the said arrangement creates rights or obligations which would not be created if it were implemented at an arm's length. The transaction will be considered tax avoidance if it results in direct or indirect misuse of the tax code, lacks commercial substance in whole or in part and is implemented by means that are not bona fide. In addition to this, the taxpayer will also have to pass several other tests like for instance whether there's a significant effect upon the business risks or net cash flow of the concerned parties. The test of substance over form, whether the arrangement involves round trip financing etc. Since these tests are subjective in nature, most transactions will attract the GAR provisions and arrangements that attract the GAR are considered impermissible avoidance arrangements. The tax collections are extremely low. The CBDT chairman is on record by saying that collect tax by whatever means and that will impact your promotions and uh, other uh, perquisites, which effectively what will the poor taxman do? The taxman has to collect taxes either in the right way or the wrong way. Once an arrangement is considered impermissible, the taxman has the power to invalidate it and determine the consequences. He may negate, disregard, set aside or recharacterize any such arrangement or he may be recognized one or more parties to the arrangement. According to PwC, this provision virtually empowers the tax authorities to lift the corporate veil, reallocate income, expenses or deductions, negate transactions and even treat several entities as one for tax purposes. 
there is unbridled power given to the tax officer who has just possibly the only safeguard of referring whether or not gar should be invoked by referring to a panel of commissioners which is called the gar panel and no sooner does he have the go ahead or the green signal he can put the assessee on show cause notice that he plans to invoke gar the onus of proving that there is no lack of commercial substance in the transaction lies with the taxpayer here it's important to know that gar is not unique to india the usa canada france germany spain italy china and australia have implemented gar while some like the uk are considering implementing it but have domestic rules to prevent the abuse of tax legislations but that's where the similarity ends india's gar gives sweeping powers to the taxman as opposed to the rules abroad according to bmr the rules in other countries are restricted in their scope and applicability for instance the uk applies anti avoidance rules to certain circular and linear step transactions only in italy these rules are applicable to certain listed transactions like mergers and contribution of capital to companies in australia the commissioner is required to issue amended assessments to taxpayers the amended assessment has a limitation period of 2 years for individuals and small businesses and 4 years for all other taxpayers in germany tax authorities are obliged to prove the inappropriateness of a legal structure and the generation of an unintended tax benefit and in the us a proposal to impose gar is reviewed and approved by an examiner who evaluates whether the application of principles is appropriate the examiner then has to notify the taxpayers about the consideration to apply the gar and provide them with an opportunity to explain their position the kind of administration that we see and uh, the the type of fairness transparency uh, the kind of reasonableness that one sees from the tax administration is also extremely relevant and that's one of the features again which is distinctly different when it comes to the indian scenario many believe that the indian government has been hasty in pushing for the gar proof of that is the fact that there's still little or no clarity on whether the rule will apply to participatory notes or offshore derivative instruments according to namura p notes may be viewed as indirect transfer of shares or interests and hence be taxable under gar edelweiss is of the view that gar will make mauritius based entities which may be lacking in proving commercial substance move to destinations like singapore where they have business operations and tax rates are low or exempt and according to clsa india's gar rules will take a toll on direct fii investors and those using participatory notes or offshore derivative instruments that's because the tax man could negate tax treaty exemptions by ignoring the structure of the derivative and look through to the end investor or the p note buyer which in turn will lead to litigation that's why clsc has taken a position to not increase its current indian p note book as a way to minimize possible tax exposure it's going to spell disaster for foreign inflows into india because there are at least 6 other firms that will be affected by this flip flopping firms like what we're told by the press at least GE AT&T Saab Miller are just three that spring to mind so i'm afraid that it's going to really rattle the cage of fund managers who decide to buy into india as well as direct investors who decide to put plants into india The FM has recently clarified that investors investing in Indian equities through P notes will not be taxed. And while markets have recovered, the uncertainty is still far from over. According to PwC, India's GAA is likely to create uncertainty about the tax implications of various business and non-business transactions and arrangements, and that in turn will create practical difficulties for taxpayers. And in the current economic scenario, such provisions could create a negative environment. PwC's report says that the current GAA provisions appear to have been conceived primarily from the revenue angle, and that at the initial stage, it would have been better to introduce specific anti-avoidance rules related to specific arrangements, which the government may consider to be tax avoidance, and confine the application of anti-avoidance rules to such cases. That's because as against the GAA. 
specific rules give confidence to taxpayers and also help in reducing litigation. They provide certainty to the taxpayer and do not grant any discretion to the tax authorities. What happens if we do not have a SAR is that in, a, in relation to a GAR, the general perception that is created is that the investor who is looking at investing the funds or you know creating certain structures or pumping into money into India into terms of you know uh, growing its business etc. He thinks five times before he is going to spend that money into India. But while SAR are more specific and help reduce time and costs involved in tax litigation, they have a very limited scope and may provide taxpayers with an opportunity to find loopholes and circumvent provisions. Which brings us back to where we started out, tax avoidance and tax evasion. The reason why tax avoidance and tax evasion is bad is because it leads to weak public finances. According to PwC, since the better off sections are more endowed to resort to such practices, it leads to cross subsidization of the rich. That's the reason why it's economically undesirable and inequitable. The GAR seems like an effective way to plug that problem and that's why it's a step in the right direction. But what the government needs to do now is to deliberate on the matter some more and come out with some clear and specific provisions rather than rushing in to prevent another Vodafone-like setback. Indeed, so is GAR the only weapon in the government's arsenal? Ketan Dalal and Rohan Shah join us on the other side of this break to discuss that. Don't go away.